It's Saturday, January 21st, 2023. It is one gorgeous day. The sun is so bright, I can't even turn my face toward it. Uh, this time of year in this part of the world, the sun starts to get very bright and, and hot in the sky, and but it's not very high yet. So <laughs> we look into the sun a lot when you look in the southern direction. It's not early in the day. We've had a, a nice restful morning, a nice uh, breakfast together. That's always nice because uh, we have good conversations. Uh, my wife and I, at that point, we're going to talk about everything under the sun, including the upcoming beekeeping season, some of our plans, some of our, our struggles that we had last year, and making plans for uh, always a better year in a farmer's book, right? So we're looking forward to that. And so subsequently we're preparing for that. Uh, so what we're doing here today is uh, we're both going to work in the wood shop. I'll work on some of my woodworking uh, shop furniture projects and she's graciously uh, offered to build frames for me. She enjoys building frames so I set her up a station there to build frames and she can bang away at that and be a real big help to the, the beekeeping season with all those nice frames already made. So a word on that, uh, this is this kind of goes hand in hand with some of the things that we're planning and then uh, that's making some nukes for sale. Uh, we've sold quite a few nukes last year and I plan to repeat that this year. So and one of the things that a person may or may not think of if you're starting out in that then you need to replace all those frames. And, you know, for example, if I make a hundred nukes, then I better build 500 frames this winter for that. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're setting our sights on uh, at least 600 frames this, uh, this season for, for the upcoming beekeeping season. And so that's what we're working on. Otherwise, it's such a gorgeous day. The, the sun is so hot, it's melting the, the snow off the buildings. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's only about minus, I don't think it's minus five out here even. Uh, and there's no wind. The sun is hot. Couldn't get any better for a January day. Uh, so that could turn around, but I'm enjoying it. I'm very much enjoying it. And if it gets cold, it's not my fault. So just remember that. Anyway, that's what today is going to look like pretty much. It's Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. I'm going to do a bit of work in the wood shop today, even though it's Sunday. Uh, yesterday wasn't too bad a day for work. And uh, I'm getting anxious about what I'm not getting done in here. So today, I'm going to be working on the radial arm saw cabinet. I did some work on that yesterday and uh, I'll catch up with all the details on that in the radial arm saw cabinet build video. This is a beautiful day out today. The sun came back, but in true form, um, when the clouds go away and the sun comes back, it gets colder. Uh, it's not wickedly cold, uh, minus 17, I think, when I woke up. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not too bad, very, very sunny, and not much wind at all. So it's really nice. I had to go out today and move some things around with the tractor. So it was not unpleasant. So I'm just catching up with a few things on the radial arm saw and I was doing a maneuver here that I thought, you know what, I think you might be interested in. So let's take a look at the table saw here and see what I'm doing. I'm not going to go into the exactly the why I need to do this. That'll be in the other video. However, I need to cut a few strips of maple. This is a nice hard maple. And I need to cut 3 16 thick strips. I'm not sure what my planer goes down to. You can do this on the planer. However, I found thin strips in the, in the planer are not really that easy either. So I've come to the table saw. Now there's a problem in that when you rip a thin strip on the table saw, you get it in here and you know, you're pushing your stock and my push stick here is very narrow, but typically I can only cut something as narrow as a quarter of an inch uh, through there. 
you can see I've kind of <laughs> skimmed the corner off of my push stick doing thin strips. So there's another way. And the other way, I don't like it as much, but it's what you have to do sometimes. And I can use my feather board for this. However, I'm going to use, this is normally how you use this feather board, but I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to use it this way. So I'm going to push that right up here. I think you can see what's going on here. I'm going to use my, my feather board, the back of my feather board as my, not my fence, but my, uh, my guide as to how thick my pieces are. And I, again, don't want the feather board to be up as far as the blade where it comes out of the table. Um, I don't need it to be really that close at all. However, I'm going to put it reasonably close. I'll put my little measure. I want to do 3 sixteenths. So, try to get that as accurate as possible. The accuracy of my piece, you know, if it's off a 32nd or something, uh, it's not going to be that bad. Okay. So now... Now I could take my, my maple, place it against that feather board there, move my fence up here to, to kind of trap it. So this is one way, this would be, this would be an okay cut. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a work piece trapped between this fixed point and this fixed point. However, um, this fixed point ends here before the blade. So once it exits the blade, then I've got nothing more than uh, my workpiece between the fence, which is a normal, normal operation. That's perfect. You see where I uh, I hesitated there. Uh, maple and cherry wood burn really easily. That's not an issue for what I'm doing. This is a spacer, so you're never gonna see it anyway. So this way you need to move the fence each time back over against your stop block. I think I need four of these. Okay, so that's just a little talk on how to make a safer thin strip uh, cut and there are there are way better kind of jigs for this but I don't have one I haven't built one generally people build them uh, but I thought well this this will work great it's nice and stable and then that becomes your your guide as to how thick and you just keep that moving that fence over to it to keep your work piece going straight Got my wife set up here on a little workbench building frames. She loves building frames, loves helping out too. She's a very helpful person. And uh, she's got a few to go. Uh, there was 600 on this skid, so she's working her best at that. I don't imagine she's gonna build 600, but that's kind of what I need to build for this year. And uh, I'm working on the radial arm saw. So that's today and uh, Thanks for watching. Take care and have fun. It's Monday, January 23rd, 2023. Well, I was back in the wood shop today 
hopefully I can get, uh, get a lot done in here. Uh, there's a new project that I'm going to start today. And you're going to have to uh, wait for the project video to see what that is and to watch it if you're so interested. Yesterday, got a lot done in the wood shop. I finished off the radial arm saw table. I didn't finish the radial arm saw cabinet. That's going to have to wait for next season. Uh, where I can do a little more work on the wood shop cabinetry, uh, storage solutions, etc. Uh, now it's time to get to work on production. Uh, kind of behind with a combination of both trying to improve the shop, uh, which I have already. I'm very pleased with what I've accomplished there. And uh, also my having not, not being able to work for a month. Um, yeah, but now I, I need to uh, get down to business and make some progress. It looks like that's going to be mostly what happens this week, although there are a number of things that have cropped up that I need to take care of. There will be another trip into Winnipeg for uh, taking honey to packing and picking up this time as well, uh, store visits, uh, and I have at least one delivery so far which uh, I'll be doing on that day. I'm not sure what day that'll be yet. Uh, I actually have two uh, live streams, uh, not my live streams. I've been invited to um, two live streams this week. And uh, you, they'll be done by the time you see this video. But Tuesday night on uh, uh, Kodiak, um, Kodiak Farms, I can't remember the, the whole name of that channel. Uh, Lee is his name. Uh, we're having uh, a live chat with uh, with James McNally, old McNally's Bees, and uh, that Canadian beekeepers blog, Ian Stepler. Uh, so I'm sure that's going to be fun. And again, this this will be finished by the time you see this video. So I'll link that uh, to uh, that video here. And Friday night, uh, I've been invited to. Uh, Sawmill Charlie's uh, channel for another live stream. We we got talking last Friday night. This kind of came out of a conversation we had last Friday night, and and again by the time you see this, it'll be done. So it'll be more than a week ago Friday night. Uh, we just got talking, and 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 people started asking me about some of the equipment and management styles that I use. So I started sharing some pictures of things that I've taken pictures of over the years. And uh, the interest just skyrocketed. And so Charlie started asking me, you know, if maybe I could do some more of that. And, and so I, I kind of upped the, the game a little bit. And I said, well, perhaps I'll put together a, a little presentation so that I can find the pictures in a timely manner. Because it's difficult to quickly find the picture you want through your entire library of pictures. Uh, so that's what I'm working on now uh, in the evenings to put together a little bit of a, a presentation. I call it uh, Equipment and Management at Faith Apiaries. And uh, I think people are more interested in equipment. Um, and everything has to be taken into context too. I know a lot of people who look at those uh, live chats, at that live chat in particular, uh, or hobbyists. So I don't want anybody thinking that I'm suggesting that, that hobbyists or any, even sideliners or commercials should use the equipment and management techniques that I use. Um, I'm more than willing to share if someone wants to, if, if someone is interested in what I'm doing, uh, I'm more than, more than willing to share uh, what I'm doing, equipment I'm using, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, and I hope everybody keeps that whole thing in mind. That that you know I don't just get a bunch of responses. I often get responses from people on on social media. Well, I, I, it doesn't work for me because blah blah blah. And that's that's cool. You know, you you do what you need to do in beekeeping. You do you you do management that works for you. You use equipment that works for you. Because I think the misconception is that there's only one way. There's only one way to manage bees, and there's only one uh, type of equipment to use for bees. And if you don't do it that way, you're doing it wrong. 
and that's absolutely not the case. Uh, there's, there's a myriad of different ways, and that's, I think, why we have the community we have, because we're constantly sharing ideas, we're constantly sharing things that we've tried and have failed, or things that we've tried and have worked out very well, uh, so we can report on our experience with that method or that piece of equipment. Uh, Bob Benny is really great for that, sharing his experiences, his knowledge, but also his experiences with different things. And he'll tell you, you know, we tried this and it didn't work out. Um, and the different equipment he uses for his, his management. The equipment that, that he has settled on as being worthwhile equipment to use and management techniques as well. Uh, so anyway, that's my little speech about about someone who, you know, might might want to disagree that oh that doesn't work. Well, that doesn't work for me, so it doesn't work. No, that's I don't buy that at all. Um, it maybe not work for you, but uh, and and that's okay. That's completely valid uh, because how you manage your bees is is how you want to manage your bees, not <laughs> the one way to manage bees. There's no one way. So anyway, that, that should be fun. Friday night, Sawmill Charlie. And again, I'll link that here in uh, this video so you can find it easy enough. You can't see the whole stack, but this pallet behind here has five wide on it. And uh, my wife has built, uh, I think she's built uh, 200 frames. They're not all right here either. So don't count and say, hey, there's not 200 there. Because <laughs> there's not. But she's built 200 frames so far, which is fantastic. She's got her little station set up here. Um, she's not as tall as I am, so working on the workbench, I actually, when I built my workbench, I, I overbuilt it in height so that it would be a more appropriate height for myself. Um, that's a bit difficult for her, especially when she uses a nail gun just to hold it up a long way. Particularly flip that frame on end and put that, that staple in, the, in under the ear. So I built this workstation here, which is uh, much lower for her. And uh, she is having a really great time. It, it just works perfectly for her. A little bit of detail, what I did here. I just threw this together. Another, uh, another reclaimed piece of furniture. I was given this, uh, it's, I guess it's a filing cabinet. This little sucker weighs way too much. You would never imagine that that thing would weigh what it weighs but it weighs a lot so she's got her supplies she's got staples and glue and a bottle of water here for her brushes there's a pack of spare brushes here so lots of uh, lots of spare parts and supplies and this is the this is the old top for the radio arm saw i just tipped it over so it wouldn't have all those grooves in it and uh, screwed it down to that. Fashioned a leg out of of some material that I had here, and so it's it's actually quite strong, very strong and sturdy. Set the airlines up for the guns, and so she has a really good time. She's got these mats here on the floor, which are uh, foam kind of foam mats, make it easier on the feet standing in one place on cement. I'm looking the other way at this table now. Um, I just wanted to show you this caddy. This this has was one of the most brilliant and handy things I've ever built. It's so simple, but uh, it's just wonderful to have this for building frames. It's just a half-inch plywood box, just a bottom and a back, and I built the dividers uh, spaced so that the different parts fit in here, top bars, bottom bars. <laughs> end bars uh, and it's uh, it's very heavy when it's full of course but it we can move it around it keeps everything keeps everything uh, organized so that you know when you have a frame building session you don't have bits and pieces laying everywhere we'll build thousands of frames sometimes in a season uh, so you have to come sometimes you have to come and build 10 or 20 frames at a time just every day or maybe then there's a, a rainy day so you need to pick that up right now and, and do it so this is really great to have all the parts right here ready and available to uh, start building frames i believe that uh caddy 
is on uh, my SketchUp uh, page. So if I can, I'll, I'll link that here too. It's Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. And it's a nippy one. Uh, minus 25C this morning. And I had to go and clear some snow. And uh, you can see by the state of the tractor and the state of me that uh, snow blowers, a lot of the snow has fallen off. Can't even see. My pants are covered in snow. Uh, so, snow blowers, the love hate with snow blowers. They get all this cold, wet, white, fluffy stuff in the air. And then it blows over on you and you get cold and wet. So I gotta get this jacket off because it's gonna be wet in a minute. My hands are cold. I didn't wear my electric socks. I wasn't planning to be out very long. So my toes are just a little cool. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I really want a, a, a closed uh, cab tractor for Christmas is what I want. Oh, yeah. So anyway, that's that's about it. We've we've got some snow lately. We've gotten uh, oh I don't know, there might be two or three inches of snow over the last few days. And I just had to go out and make sure the driveway was clear. Um, I can get out just fine, but problem is it's it's not a well defined driveway. And if someone comes in here, they they drive off the driveway pretty easy, and then they get stuck. And that's my problem. So I'd rather prevent that problem. And so that's what I had to do. And it cleared a little bit more too while I was out. Uh, so just working in the shop again today. I uh, had a really good chat last night with, uh, with the guys. I'll, I'll link that chat here on this video. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Joined by James and Ian and Phil. I uh, talked about a lot of things concerning bees and the bee industry and bee beekeeping. Uh, it seemed to, a lot of it seemed to uh, have the theme of the commercial operation. And I suppose that makes sense. Uh, Ian is definitely commercial. Ian and Phil are a similar size commercial operation. I'm a, quite a small commercial operation. James is a sideline operation. Uh, but he's growing and I can see him. <laughs> calling himself commercial soon but you know we we led off with that conversation what's commercial what's sideline what's what's hobby and uh and i i agreed with what phil said you, you know um if 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 we kind of stop putting <clears throat> putting each other in boxes then we might relate to each other better we might we might get along better uh, I suggested that, you know, if someone is, is trying to call someone a, a commercial or a hobby or a sideline, they have some kind of an agenda behind that and they want to put them in that box for some particular reason. Having said that, it's a convenient tag to kind of give an idea of, of what your day is like, what, what kind of thing you're doing. You know, I call myself commercial because my only, it's my only job. I have the luxury of having this be my only job. Uh, so that's why I call myself commercial, but that's, you know, it's just my definition, really. So anyway, <clears throat> it was a good time. And, uh, everybody, everybody I talked to said they had a good time. And, uh, today is back in the shop. So I'm, I'm continuing on with my project that I was working on. And I'll, I'll link that project here when I'm done. So if you don't see the link, I'm not done. Uh, it, it could be another week before I'm done. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what's going on today. So have a good time and enjoy the day. Take care and have fun.